Uh, this is called Prelude to a Put Down. She can be very seductive. Have you ever heard this phrase without its corollary, the put down? Something like, but she's utterly mad. <laughs> I know she can be very seductive by itself. It's not really a sentence, as it lacks the requisite follow-up. But you're making a huge mistake. <laughs> can be very seductive, I have heard it say. But for God's sakes, Kevin, he's only 25. <laughs> As a prelude to a put-down, she can be very seductive, has few peers. I have lived through decades of English and heard this one a million times. What kind of person says these five words? People haunted by their own imaginations. <laughs> In the mail... In the mail on Sunday, one of Keith Urban's early girlfriends warned Nicole Kidman against hoping too much. When he talks the talk, he can be very seductive, but I'm not sure Keith will ever be ready to settle down. heritage rock concerts. <laughs> Led Zeppelin, could you play Stairway to Heaven? <laughs> um, I'll read poem, a few poems to, uh, from my new project, which is uh, it's called Nude, and it was uh, commissioned by Glad Barbara Gladstone Gallery, who asked me to write poems in honor of Ugo Rondinone. And he was doing this uh, big installation in New York. Basically, it was sculptures of human figures, n naked, joined together in weird ways that they looked, they were very finely worked, except that their joints looked like puppets, you know, like they're marionette type joints. And they're all lying like they were dead, sleeping, or dying in the far corners of the gigantic, cavernous Gladstone Gallery. Like no two were anywhere close together. So I was like, <laughs> and they wanted me to stay there overnight in the gallery to get the spooky atmosphere. Will you stay the night at Barbara Gladstone Gallery <laughs> all night for reals? Are your nerves up to it? Are you feeling lucky, boy? Like the house on Haunted Hill I saw when I was a kid. An oversized skeleton swoops on wires from the theater rafters. Its long, dangling fingers grasp at the hats of the moviegoers. Whoever agrees to stay in the house all night long will earn $10,000 each. Did anybody see House on Haunted Hill? <laughs> the guests are trapped with ghosts and terrors and hors d'oeuvres, but no electricity, no cell phones, no keys to the door. Blind, my feet stumble over body after body. Life's too short. I knew that. Yet why are all of these, my friends, dead or dying on the gallery floor? Welcome to the house on Haunted Hill, in tones of voice <laughs> profundo, from hidden speakers built inside the space. Since it was built a century ago, seven people, including my brother, have been murdered in it. Since then, I've owned the house. I only spent one night here, and when they found me in the morning, I, I was almost dead. <laughs> this is Vincent Price who wrote this part. <laughs> Was it a nightmare we were collectively dreaming? Or maybe the triumph of the Koch brothers that turned our bodies into clay, our joints to wire, our cocks and cunts into jewels and berries? Announce the death of the common space so that each place, each warehouse floor, each forest glade is now owned by the rich, its airspace, its grave space the space between, even the invisible world in which the magic used to happen. I am his fourth wife. The first one disappeared. The other two died. In the morning when you find me, kick my ribs in. Make sure I've gone to my maker, not to no devil. Watch the last ecto breath of life flutter up towards the dark. Master Ugo, Keep those demons off me, I pray you. 
because this is all like more of the same thing. It was the most depressing project I ever did. I was like beating myself up with depression. Violets in the snow. Black wax on blue rare earth. Blue Trinitron from the Congo. Did that girl swallow a Santa hat? <laughs> no, she has fur on her teeth. And she'd be giving you that Chloe Savigny look. <laughs> <laughs> sort of seductive, but fragile, like violets in the snow. TV newsman holds up dirt that sips through his hands into a tin pan. Those gray specks are rare earth minerals. I mean, they're nondescript. They're not sparkling and shiny like gold or diamonds or anything, but they're, they're just as important. And Mubarak adds, I plan to go. Back straight, arms folded, dog squirming on the leash. We fear the man behind the curtain. Thing is, there ain't no curtain. It's us. So I remember when Mubarak did go. Okay, so that's when I was writing this. This is the box, and this was a movie I was watching when I was writing this project, and the box, Cameron Diaz, yes. Yes. and she gets a box, and I can't remember the setup, but if she agrees to turn this key in the box, somebody may die on Earth, but she gets $1 million, and she'll never know the person, never know who it was, and doesn't, it won't affect her in any way. <laughs> so this is the lesson at the end. Satan comes in and tells her this. <laughs> Copied it off the screen. Your home is a box. Your car is a box on wheels. You drive to work in it. You drive home in it. You sit in your home, staring into a box. It erodes your soul while the, while the box that is your body inevitably withers, then dies whereupon it is placed in the ultimate box to slowly decompose. <laughs> this one's called Wink. I think we need to see some link between those eight bodies on the floor, a factual link to make sense of the death drive. Foolishly, I posited that one had swept with another then he with her, and so around the floor, a slow moving windmill of lust, lust and loss. But it may not be that narrative. What is that need to explain the nude? It comes from within, from spatial relations, or am I a novelist through and through, as once I wanted to write for the soaps, Santa Barbara, One Life to Live. The reason she's in that corner is that she wants to avoid that man's gaze, for she is the sister of the bride he left at the altar. <laughs> George Kuchar reasons, Cornell Woolrich reasons, what is your favorite link between the living and the dead? Pick one, ladder, lantern, seance, telenovela, scotch and tab. That was my favorite. <laughs> Rose bouquet, coins on the eyelids. The affordance is perfect, but from time to time one must intervene in the conflict. Step up, clap hands sharply twice, clear your throat, say, boys, no squabbling. The bodies are like something from Racine. Ce n'est plus un ardour dans mes veines cachées. C'est Venus. French, French people? Yeah. <laughs> Help me out here. But it, it basic, to me, it means something like, it used to be just like a little thing that I could dismiss, but now it has taken over my entire body. And this one I wrote when Peter Christopherson died. Do you know him? The, They called him sleazy. What you cannot see is truth. That's the name of my poem. And I was watching Argento, Mother of Tears. 
Sky a deep blue and Umbrian blue above the cold towers of San Francisco, watching Argento's Mother of Tears, in which a kind of a haggard Asia plays an art historian and an archaeologist. <laughs> <laughs> she blows <laughs> dust <laughs> off a bannered inscription in some unexplored catacombs, up pop words. What you see does not exist, she translates for our benefit. Well, what's that bit down there? Mm -hmm. What you cannot see is truth. And over the Pacific, words fail to pierce the tongue. In Bangkok, Peter Christopherson lies dead, uncrowned and broken, the sturdiest little alarm clock. His lips move, his greatest enemy, the lie. Through dark catacomb, he prowls pausing for the merest moment at that dizzying staircase. Vertigo would freeze a lesser man. It is not the man who descends. It is the world that lifts up. Sky fills with blue, more blue, blue filched from every corner of earth. I'm sorry for you because evidently you don't have blue where you live. It is piled up above me like the laugh of St. Sleazy. There's a picture of Peter Christopherson. <clears throat> Nude Valentine. I wrote this as Valentine. <laughs> Pick this Gerbera daisy, pull off its petals one at a time. Don't freak out when they don't come out right. She loves me, she loves me not. That word not, so harsh, like a dog bite. Tempted to cheat on the daisy. You can look ahead, see three knots and three yays. <laughs> then the flower, nude, falls to the dirt. I loved the luck of it. I loved not the luck of it. I loved it when you sucked my cock. It was our slang for love. You would pull my daisy from out of my Levi's. I wanted to die then, so happy. Your finger ha tapping, my asshole. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> this one's also called Link. And I wrote this in one of those meetings of the Nonsites Collective, copying down what everybody was saying about, about death. In an art space, what is commons? What is communing? The somatic practices of curriculum Reclamation of public spaces, consensus versus desensus. The majority of the body is frontier. As Tim Lugos wrote, the corpses change, but the party goes on forever. The body is biologically incomplete. What's missing? It's a simple question. Can a body be a commons? I hear that it's cold way down there, Laura Nero sang. Crazy cold way down there. Just two more. Five year plan. <laughs> I'm picturing myself in five years to become obscure among human beings, but clear, clearer in all relations, to become the night thickening to mist over the water, vanishing with the first light of morning. And then this is my last poem, Speak Right. I began having dreams about lo losing all my teeth, like one by one, or like one tooth would be missing, then I couldn't, the words were missing also to describe what I was trying to get at. Can you hear me? Nations led by Pygmalion at the promise of Galatea, the need to make inert flesh come alive, behave like a girl. That need plunges through mind to war. Can you hear me? It is believed that if one takes the right tone to this work, speak directly into its heart, its anime catch fire, rocky old sway emerge, kingfishers catch fire, <laughs> Frankenstein bends, his head bigger than the moon sits up on the table, linen sheets slip away from his loins, Body looks at me, quietly moves its mouth. Hello, Kevin. 
And then you have all that Kazurai about, you created it, now you're responsible for it. Udo here did this so well in Flesh for Frankenstein. The Baron coming to hate his creation, having to try to find it a gay mate, and then shrug, I ain't no pimp. Speak low when you speak love. Speak into the monster's ear, hello bodies. I am here to visit you for one night only. Tell me your dreams as you lie across enchanted forest floor at Barbara Gladstone Gallery. The stone, the glad, were you? My friends from former public life, did I kiss your mouth? Were you thinking of my breath as you lost your last? I was in your lap, digging and growling like my dog, finding the warm spot. Come, dead friends, you are almost alive. The wax on the wood anoints you into Lazarus calm. You might push away the stone, announce your life naked, linen forgotten at your feet, your genitals bright and rosy, your eyes clear. For once, I was in love with you from far away. You seem not to care then. I was in agony. Did I wish you dead then? Or did I wish merely you had never come to life in the first place? to torment me with your cute haircut and your grinning face so similar to that of screen star Joseph Gordon. <laughs> Speak low as we fall adrift. You laugh when boys or women tell their dreams. Is it not your trick? You recognize that's the end of Auntie Cleopatra. In this room, give me your madness. Bring me your youth in a jar, the snake on my breast that sucks the nurse's sleep. Come give me your kind words. Hello, Kevin. How once I jumped out of my seat while driving, while they came up on the screen in the gallery with Scott, when your photo rolled across the screen and the walls fell away. Nude there, white walls. And I was thinking, is this what want is about? You've got the gift, then out of poetry, some words drop out, scattered like corn, fallen from the cob. Words drop out, and those that remain, like the teeth in a skull, lisp when they mean to sing. Words fall down. It is a tree with blood instead of sap. Speak into my ears, be right. bid me to live. Words drop out like futures in my 401k plan. I look for you, I scan the room. There's no you in it. There's a gap between gravestones. Valentine's, you have left for Brussels. I could have worn, sworn I heard your whisper. I am reading these signs that the infidel hates me. That's it.